Greetings, sentient beings, and welcome back to another episode of Punkworks Project Kerbal Shed. Today's episode, we are going to deal with, well, planetary in situ resource utilization. So we're going to be mining resources in situation and using those resources to develop, um, because that's kind of what you do. Um, so, oh, yep, yeah, Kerbal's agree. All right, so right now all we're pulling up is metal ore and ore, courtesy of extra planetary launch pads. Um, it's a great mod, goes great with KSP Interstellar Extended, and here's why. Um, I do apologize, it's night. Um, I seem to always be doing things at night. I don't understand why, but I'm going to close this real quick. All right, so ore is being dug up by the Drillomatic stock mining excavators, normal size. They pull up a decent amount of ore, uh, considering there's not much here. Me. There we go, see that? No, almost no ore, and sadly no alumina, which really sucks. But there's alumina around us, and that's a, so that, that particular problem is going to be okay. I needed a flat spot to build a base, so we're building on the Great Flats. Um, you know, pretty much there-ish. I got a survey site out way out here that we're going to check on um, because I need to find a really good spot. Um, can't just throw down anywhere because when you're scanning resources, you want to make sure you got your narrow band scanner. Um, and if you're using ScanSat um, along with uh, KSP Interstellar Extended, here is what I recommend to do. Because, um, you know, Interstellar Extended adds all those neat um, extra you know, resources with the community resource pack and other mods do as well. So the community resource pack kind of puts them all together. Um, so, you know, scan, scan, scan sat will scan for whatever, it doesn't care. Um, but what you're going to want to do, my recommendation, if you want it to play nicely with Interstellar Extended, is disable stock scanning. Um, disable the resource biome lock so that you don't have, like, the entire biome is the same resources. You actually get to, you know, scan and look for the optimal sites. It'll spread it out. Um, require the narrowband scanner so that you can actually do that and find the sweet spots in the resources, you know, where they're most concentrated. And then once you've got all that done, you know, set all those up. If it's a brand new game, you know, um, just start a new game and, and you're good. Um, otherwise, like if you've already had stock resource gener resources generated and you want to make sure that the scan set settings that you put in match what your narrowband scanner and your uh, interstellar universal drill reads um, you're gonna want to go over to um, data management and then reset stock resource for that planet you're on or for all of them um, don't reset the map because you don't need to change that but reset the resources so that the changes you made over here actually take effect okay and then when you do your scans what scan set tells you will match what the interstellar interstellar extended universal drill tells you um, if you don't do this and you leave stock scanning on, these will not match. Um, they will be off. Um, and it, it, this one's the one that's actually going to be harvested. So this won't actually give you accurate information unless you take the steps that I just mentioned. Okay. So once you do that, you want to survey your resource site. So what we're doing right now is we have a launch pad here. And we are going to build a survey kit. Uh, it has a bunch of parts in it that are useful for surveying around the flats and finding that perfect spot. And then we're going to uh, um, load survey alpha up there over there with it. Um, I kind of sent this craft out there to survey without these materials present. Um, and that was a bit of a mistake of mine. So we're going to go back <laughs> and uh, pick those materials up. Uh, what we've got right here is a part. It, basically this was built in situation, um, in several pieces, and really I should fast forward to daytime so that we can actually see what's going on. Oh, that would be the time warp stopping because the build that I was doing finished. Okay, now we're in the daytime. Alrighty, so thermal inline receivers, four of them, each one attached to a Pelican thermal turbojet because they VTOL, and main fuel liquid co2 why did i go with liquid co2 well i'll tell you the process of digging up metal ore 
and ore, and then smelting it into metal using the uh, smelters, uh, smelter module provided by Extra Ground Tiger Launch Pad to produce some byproducts in addition to the metal. You also get um, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, water, um, formaldehyde, and just straight up carbon. Um, uh, as as byproducts, depending on how efficiently you're running. Um, generally, you're only going to get you know the water and the metal and some carbon monoxide um, if you're smelting perfectly, or is it carbon dioxide? If you're, I, I think it's carbon monoxide if you're smelting perfectly. And then if you're not smelting perfectly, or even at zero percent efficient, you're not smelting at all. You're just burning the fuel. Um, then you know it's like hydrogen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, carbon like soot, uh, formaldehyde, uh, probably other stuff. But uh, the EPL doesn't actually model everything; just the ones that I just listed. But um, if you don't have tanks for that, it all gets vented. Um, but if you do have tanks for it, you can sequester the gas and then use a refrigerator to liquefy it into liquid CO2, and then run your turbo jets on them once you have the technology unlocked to do so. Um, and it's really cool. So this craft weighs, uh, its mass is 10.75 tons. Um, so not super heavy, but not super light. Um, and each of these has been scaled down to 8% throttle because we're collecting a large amount of power um, because we have so much. Um, you know, I, I should really turn you know the reception down on these, but I'm not gonna just throttle the engines down and make sure the radiators are working. And we're good. All right, so tiny bit of liquid CO2. Each uh, of these containers doesn't really have much. There's like 80 kilograms in each of the six. Um, so, you know, decent amount. Um, but even at, you know, like a teeny bit of throttle, like, uh, what is this? Let me, let me, let me take a look. 8% of 8% throttle, you know? <laughs> and we, we have lift. Just turn that off. Min minimus gravity is like half a meter per second uh, at the surface, like less than half a meter per second. So it really doesn't take much to stay afloat. So a teeny bit of liquid CO2 and these thermal turbo jets and this thing can just hover around minimus and do whatever it needs to, to do. Um, so I came out here to about latitude zero, longitude 1717, um, because I wanted to make sure that this was a good spot. Um, it's about two kilometers away. It's about the distance that you get from um, a uh, Coppola module. It acts as a survey station uh, when you want to build something not attached to a launch pad. It's got a two kilometer range when you have a fully leveled up pilot. Uh, so I'm about two kilometers out and just kind of surveying the site and then I forgot all the... Uh, I forgot to put a narrowband scanner and a few other things on this. Uh, so I got to go back. Um, but we're going to I'm going to check out a few different sites and kind of see where the, um, you know, the ore's the best and then if there's any alumina on this entire flat because I'd really like to do some alumina mining, uh, which is really easy on Mun, but here on Minmus, uh, not so much. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of flame um, when this thing is throttled down so low, which is why you don't see the exhaust coming out. Trust that you know, there is exhaust, but it's liquid CO2 being shot out, so it's going to be fairly, you know, invisible until you turn the throttle way up, which I'm not going to do because I don't want my Kerbal here right on the roof to be, you know, terrified of what's going to happen if that happens. All right, so let's go ahead and cut away, and then I'll come back um, once we're ready to attach the new parts. Right yo then. So as we come in for a landing here, we see that the materials that we are waiting on are almost, or well, actually they are ready. Uh, so we need only collect them. There we are. Using hydrogen peroxide for RCS because it's got that nice oomph. Alrighty, now we're landed. Now, just wanted to land out here first before I just drop right on the pad because that's things like right there, so I don't want to just land on top of it. Um, so, let me go ahead and finish the build here. Switch vessels. Got a debugs, or um, 
exceptions and whatnot printed to the screen because I'm trying to debug like all the different mods that I've got going on here and making sure that they all play nicely um, because I've kind of gotten a little carried away with the modding um, <laughs> and definitely encountering an issue or two lately. Uh, so pay no attention to that. That's just some debugging for me. All right, finalize the build. Okay. Let's go ahead and close that. Alrighty. And these are our supplies. Nice and upside down. Okay. Cool. We take our engineer, Aldney. Aldney Kerman, sporting that awesome new blue jumpsuit from uh, one of the DLCs. Uh, I forget exactly which one, um, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I wanted one of the fortunate souls that was an early adopter, so I get those DLCs for free. Um, but if you um, are considering whether it's worth you know, spending like you know 15 bucks uh, to get one of the DLCs, I highly recommend getting Breaking Ground. Um, I can't recommend it enough. It is like seriously, it's it, it it's an expansion for the game. You want it? It's fun. It's got all kinds of cool stuff. The robotics alone are neat. Um, aside from everything else, the robotics like make it worth it. Um, but everything else, that, like the science, the little new surface features, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, highly, highly recommend that. All right, so let's see what we got in here. In here, we have a narrowband scanner and, of course, a been there, done that scanner, just in case we run into any anomalies. So that's going to be definitely, you know, it's going to be useful. And then over here, in that container, uh, we have a whole mess of stuff. We got a drill, we got a hammer. Uh, or a mallet rather, and survey stakes. These are for setting up survey sites on the ground. And then we got a, a little construction kit for a little bit of a science experiment thing. Um, breaking ground comes with um, pre-made science experiments that are really easy to use, but this would be something you might do if you don't have breaking ground. Um, also, breaking ground comes with that neat little scanning arm for the new surface features. You definitely want that. Uh, but there are tons of videos on YouTube's um, that tell you all about these new things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a shout out to Shadow Gamer. Look up his Breaking Ground DLC review. It's super awesome and, and informative. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and make some changes. First thing we gotta do though, first thing we gotta do though, so we gotta make sure that we release our new construction here so that it is a part unto itself. There we go, perfect. And now Altney here. Probably can't lift the whole thing. Oh, what do you know? On uh, Minmus, I totally can. But we're gonna run into an issue, I think. Yeah, that's kind of what I was afraid of. I'm not actually gonna be able to move it the way I want to move it. That's okay. I think I have a solution to this. Oh, it needs a tool. Okie dokes. There's my tool. I see all three parts are attached. Okay. This is a rather heavy container. there and hope it doesn't explode. Okay, didn't explode. Great. Good stuff. Ah, because 
is this thing? It's too big. Still has a part attached. Wait, I thought I took that off. I was about to start thinking I figured out some sort of infinite duplication glitch. I can't pick it up still. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Okay. Inventory. I bet you this is too big. Oh, way too big. Okay. Plan B. Just gonna move that out the way. Yeah. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> just going to kind of do this. Which I suppose kind of defeated the purpose of the first maneuver where we just kind of dropped that thing right there, but whatever. Oh no. Oh no. That didn't work. That was a bad idea. Okay. All right. We missed we missed on that one, but fortunately the low gravity of Minmus we didn't explode. Perfect. All right. Like we almost know what we're doing. Uh, except it's still on the wrong side. Let's turn around. And Switch back to our little Kerbal there. It's gonna be one of these guys. There we are. Okay, do a little switcheroo here. We're good. Do they both fit? They certainly do. Okay, so that's going to be a total of 280 kilograms on the back here. Uh, so I'll have to take note of that. Let's see. Did we already decide that we can't fit these in our inventory? Yes. Okay. Okay, so center of mass on this vessel was right here, but this added a little bit more. So we might want to think about that. Let's see where would where would a good spot be to put that crate on the front? You think? Yeah, 
I'm gonna put it on the front. Okay. Let's get in here. Oops. Oh, well, that's actually okay. We kind of wanted that to happen anyway. And fun thing about Minimus is you can kind of move around with just reaction wheels a lot of the time. Um, but every now and then you're going to need a little bit of that thrust. Okay. Let's try to gently nudge this off without breaking the radiator. Nope, missed it. Alright, this is supposed to be a resource utilization tutorial, not a um, space ballet tutorial. So, I'm going to go ahead and clip away real quick. We'll, we'll rescue that thing, and then we'll get back to the important stuff. Okay, so that took a second, but we're good now. Let's go ahead and plop that right there. And uh, the base that we will eventually build is going to have a recycler on it, so don't worry about that. We'll, we'll make use of that. All right, let's jump back in the seat here. Now that we are loaded up and ready to go. Oh, wait. You know, it would probably be a good idea to actually deploy the antenna that we just got. So let's go ahead and plop that. Right there. Is that a good spot for it? Yeah, right there. Perfect. Nothing to it. Okay, now we are ready to... Yeah, I definitely didn't line everything up right when I was building this thing, but come on. I built this thing on Minmus. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay, we can activate our scanner. And we have apparently just enough clearance in front of our engineer's face. He is quite pleased about that. <laughs> and definitely no Illumina. Cool. Okay, so let's take a little flyzies around. And yeah, I do know that I'm about to run out of CO2. It's not the best on the ISP, but I do have a bunch of liquid fuel and oxidizer in here that this thing will happily run on. So no worries. Lots of fuel options. Um, I could, I suppose, dock and refuel. That might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I think I'll do that first. Space potato bug. I like it. Very easy to handle. Very maneuverable. Doesn't get out of control. Just gotta make sure you don't uh, overpower those engines. Went on Minimus, but definitely turn them up if you're on a bigger planet. Like Duna or Kerbin or something. Um, CO2 wouldn't be a viable choice unless you had much, much larger or, uh, storage tanks for it if uh, you were on like curb and uh, it would only <laughs> give you a couple of moments of flight. Oh, 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 too far, too far. No, no, no. Uh, totally safe to fire the engine over the liquid fuel and oxidizer storage tanks right here. Definitely, definitely safe. Expert docking in three, two, nope. I think the magnets are throwing me off. Let's give it a little bump. A little more bump. There we go. Perfect. And we are docked. Okay, so definitely going to want to well, I guess we're only going to be here for a second. Um, so my refrigerator over here is just chock full of carbon dioxide. As I mentioned, 
um, as we dig up ore and metal ore, which I guess we're not digging right now, let me go ahead and turn that on, um, we collect you know, a few things. So we collect metal ore and we collect uh, regular ore somewhere. I forgot where I was storing the ore. Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, it's empty right now because every bit that I am turning up right now is going through this resource, uh, the K and K Planetary ISRU. It is part of Kerbal Planetary Base Systems and uh, basically models the stock um, converter there um, with slightly worse efficiency than the full size one. Um, it's better than the smaller stock one, but worse than the full size one. So it kind of balances in the middle there, um, but it fits perfectly into the K and K um, system, and it uh, it looks neat and it works. So that's the one I'm using. Um, obviously, it, it works better if you have engineers on board. Uh, from there, that liquid fuel and oxidizer is used by the smelter, the smelter. Um, Exoplanetary launch pads has its own smelters. Um, Kerbal Planetary Base Systems provides you with a K&K smelter that uses that module, I think for the middle sized one or something like that. Um, and basically metal ore goes in and you use liquid fuel and oxidizer to turn it into metal and you get byproducts. Um, amongst those byproducts, I am sequestering the hydrogen and I am sequestering the carbon dioxide and liquefying it and then we're going to use that um, to refuel our little uh, rover thingy here. Um, I remember back in the day I used to use a mod uh, called TAC Fuel Balancer uh, to um, balance fuels in a much more effective manner. Um, I think Kerbal Attachment System using their pumps has a pretty good fuel balancer transfer thingy. Um, but for now, I'm not, you know, I'm just using the, the stock stuff, um, and it is what it is. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and speed this up for you real quick, or just skip through it, and we'll come back in a second. All right, it looks like we've transferred all of our CO2 over, uh, except for a teeny tiny amount. There we go. We will slowly collect a little bit more as this thing continues to smelt. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that other drill on. Activate drill and then start smelting metal ore again and the scrap metal uh, scrap metal just turns that back into metal at a rate of like nine to one nine scrap metal makes one metal um i think or maybe one scrap metal yeah something like that um so i i forget the exact ratio it's in the manual the extra engineering launch pads comes with the manual so it's all all the calculations and stuff are in there um, but basically uh, it's producing carbon dioxide for me at the moment. Let me take a look here. Yeah, see, we're uh, we're slowly filling up. Doesn't do it in like humongous amounts, but uh, over time, you know, we've only been up here for like seven and a half days, and I've I've done several trips in this thing around here. Uh, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get back to that. Uh, nope, not that one. That one. Undock. There we go. Switch to that vessel. Alrighty. And go ahead and fire our engines right next to the liquid fuel oxidizer and hydrogen tanks. No problem. And away we go. Okay, now we've got access to curb net with this thing, but really, um, you're not gonna really do much with that. <laughs> um, oh, that's right, I reset the whole thing, so I have to redo my resource scan anyway. Uh, so I don't have curb net at the moment, because um, I have to resurvey the planet, because I, I actually deleted my uh, stock scanning um, when I realized what I had done. Um, but the narrowband scanner still works. Um, just gotta do the scan. See? Here we go. Alright, so what we're looking for is a high concentration of ore, alumina, and metal ore, ideally. 
Um, uraninite also would be super great. So this place is great, except there's no alumina. Uh, so let's check, like up here. Although I would really prefer uh, to build on the flats because, you know, it's flat. Bases tend to blow up less when it's flat. <laughs> Alrighty, so after a little bit of flying around, um, not that much flying around, of course, but about a couple seconds. And it looks pretty promising all around us uh, is a pretty decent amount of alumina. And then up here in the Midlands and the Highlands is the highest concentration of alumina. So if we had our base here, we could send just someone just right here. We, we could build our base right here and have access to alumina all around us. Um, so in general, I'm liking, I'm liking the area that we're in. And we'll probably just go ahead and build out in the flats anyway. Let's go ahead and go into travel mode. Oh yeah. You like that? It's good stuff. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and we'll uh, get those stakes planted. Oh yeah, I should also mention that on the entirety of Minmus um, fluorite, apparently, I did not get lucky in this game and it's just not to be found. <laughs> um, so I have to import fluorite, which is a problem. Uh, if you want to use the awesome features of the uranium nitride uh, reactors, um, and there are quite a few that use uranium nitride, uh, it's good good stuff, um, you're gonna need to first turn it into uranium tetrafluoride, um, which is gonna require calcium fluoride that you can turn into fluorine uh, gas so that you can you know, do that. <laughs> um, you need to fluoridate it before you can run the ammonia analysis on it. Um, and so that, that has that's actually gonna be a bit of an issue uh, for me, so I'm gonna have to import the fluorine. Uh, to Minmus if I want to use that. Fortunately though, it is just chock fuel of fusion materials. Um, so really I can just run on fusion reactors uh, and beamed power for my power, but I'm gonna want, you know, some supply of fluorine from somewhere. Um, so candidates right now are Ike, Duna, and Elu in my save file. And I should also mention that um, the resource biome lock uh, remained active even after I reset um, the thing, so that's why it's all still locked to the biome. So this whole you know, scanning, I, I found out really quick. Um, you know, I wasn't going to get a sweet spot. I can pretty much build anywhere on the flats and it'll have the same resources. So I'm just going to go back to that same spot that I was at, um, at 0 um, latitude 17 longitude. Do, do, do. Now again, we're looking for zero latitude. We want to put this sucker on the equator. Just because, really. No, no real reason for it. Alright. It's going to take us a little bit longer than I thought to get there. 
So we'll just activate fast travel mode. Another thing I love about these Pelican engines are the little spiky exhaust thingies uh, that act as wonderful, wonderful landing grips on Minmus. Um, this is this is what you want: a nice, height, hot nozzle with spikes to cut right into that ice <laughs> chunk. All right. So let's see. We got 0 0.05. Not quite what I was going for. Just that. I suppose we can just get out and walk. stickler for wanting to get it right on the right latitude. Also want to make sure that we rem I remain within two kilometers of Build ship. Gotta make sure of that. Good enough. Good enough. Let's close that. Don't need that anymore. And we don't need that anymore. Alrighty. Alright, Aldi. You can, you can stop showing off. Um. <laughs> No, new. No. Okay, so that minor, minor design flaw. Yeah. Okay, we we can get this under control. Possibly. Can we? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that was fun. Let's go ahead and fly back. out of UVA propellant, so that's not going to be good. So one thing we're going to have to do super fast. Let's see if we can't uh, refill our propellant. Hopefully we can refill our propellant. Oop, wrong one, wrong one. Not that one either, there we go. Ah, look at that screen fill up with all the bugs. 
It's okay though. It's all good. Oop, that didn't work. Nor did that. There we go. Hopefully that refills our RCS. <laughs> And it did, yay, okay, good. All right, time to get to work. We're gonna need ourselves a mallet. Well, I don't need the drill. I want a couple of these stakes. Um, you can use anywhere between one and like four or more maybe, I don't know, depending on exactly how many definitions you want to uh, define there. I'm gonna just use two. I'm gonna basically show you. I mean, you could just get away with one, but when I build a base, I want to use two because I don't want to build the base directly on top of the stake. Because then the stake glitches out and like clips through the map and you can't get it back, which isn't the hugest thing, but it's annoying, so I'm not gonna do it. Alright, so let's. Oop, wrong way. Gotta go south. Yes, yes. Go right here. Okay. Ding. Okay. So press two to activate the mallet. Press one to activate one of those stakes. Hold H. Surface attach and click. Right. So now you right click on here, and this can be an origin or it can be you know coordinate. It can be a bound or a direction. So I'm going to do bound. Um, I think it's x minus, I think is the one that I want. Yeah. I'm probably doing this wrong, and I probably want something else. But I'm going to do x minus there, and then I'm going to go over here. Like just before, yeah, right there. Um, let's move over here, so we're aligned. All right, so if I move just back here, the latitude changes, so that's that's kind of what I'm going for, is I want my bounds right there. So I want to make sure that center of mass um, of my base, of, of the root part of my base at least, is lined up between these two poles on the equator. So that's that's the bounds of our equator. And yeah, I think I think I actually might have wanted to do Y instead. I don't know. I don't want the thing to pop up in the air, so I'm just gonna stick with X and if this is wrong then it's wrong. <laughs> um yeah. Alright, so let's rename the stake. Uh you don't have to do this. Um But I'm just gonna. All right, so we yeah, just call it a base, whatever. All right, so that's done. We are now able to. Oops. Drop back down. Open our inventory here, and we can return the mallet and then grab. We're not quite done though, um, because I didn't come all the way out here just to put a couple of sticks in the ground, or to run into engines. Our second crate of supplies. There we go. Open this bad boy up. All right. A few things we're gonna want. We're gonna want that probe. We're just gonna put that right there. We're gonna arm our drill by pressing one. We grab one of these guys, and we are going to attach it. I think right there. Go 
ahead and detach this one right there. And then this one. Obviously, I'm not going to put one on all three sides. Actually, I'm going to put this one on, or on all four sides. I'm just going to do three sides. Put that one right there. Surface scanning module. It's going to go on the fourth side. Sideways. Whoops, I forgot to attach that, so it's probably going to explode. Nope, okay, good. Let's actually attach this one. Good. Now, um, you may or may not already know this, but the seismic accelerometer, part of the stock um, science gizmos, um, from way back when, has an interstellar extended science experiment attached to it as well. Um, and it's really, really cool. Um, I'm in Sandbox, so doing those types of experiments isn't that huge and important, but <laughs> if you're playing in career mode, this is, this is a great way to farm science, because what you do is you set up a station like this, and you get power on it. Let me, let me finish putting the solar panels on. So you know you power it up, you set it up, and you uh, set this thing up um, to record seismic activity. And then whenever there's an impact anywhere on the planet, this doesn't have to be loaded; um, it just needs to be on the planet and on. And if there's an impact anywhere on the planet, this will record it, and it will record it as science, um, which you can then collect and or transmit back for ultra science gains. Um, and it'll work a few times, but there's diminishing returns. So, you know, every experiment, you know, every impact produces a little bit less science. Um, but, you know, the first several are quite nice. <laughs> uh, so you're, you know, you definitely want to take advantage of that so that you can uh, get that science quickly. I don't think we're going to be able to quite get this one on the way I wanted to. Oh, well, that's okay. There we go. Alrighty. Now, do I need a scientist to turn this on? Nope. Log seismic data. Uh, I believe is all that is necessary, but let me double check. Oh no, it's record seismic data. Okay. So surface will be monitored for impact events. So you click record seismic or you know, and it'll start recording. If you log it, it's the actual research thingy. Um, so sorry about that. And then once you've got you know a bunch of science on here, you hit collect uh, to collect it out of this, uh, or you can transmit it if you have a big enough transmitter. But it's a lot of data, so you want to want to make sure you got a lot of. You, this won't transmit it <laughs> at all, but this will certainly log that information um, and collect it. You know, and we can you know come here and grab some science, uh, run our analysis. And get a more detailed picture of what the resources are in this particular location. Uh, so Rhandonite 1.44, Regolith uh, 7.37, no spotamine, which is an issue for me, uh, not having any spotamine. There's actually less ore out here, but more metal ore. That's interesting. Um, substrates, good. Silicates, Regolith. So pretty decent um, haul here as far as you know what's available to harvest. Um, but not, not the best. Could be better. Uh, but this is what we're working with. Alrighty. So we'll just leave this here. 
and it will uh, it will do its thing, continue to monitor and be a little outpost here. And then hopefully when we deploy the base, it doesn't deploy directly on top of this. Uh, and we can actually check that now. So now that we're ready uh, to start, let's go ahead and go to the ship and double check if we have actually Oh wait, you know what? I don't think we can because we don't have a survey thing attached to... yeah. Alright, so we have to actually go back to the ship and dock before we're going to be able to actually um, test this out. So let's get our crew members back on board. And we'll return to base. Alrighty, so I definitely ran out of CO2, uh, too much messing around, so I had to switch to liquid fuel oxidizer for flight mode. Um, so we're going a little bit faster just so we can get there before we run out of fuel because the liquid fuel oxidizer is not as efficient, uh, so it'll, it'll run out uh, pretty quickly. But it does provide a good amount of thrust, so it doesn't take much to get going on Minmus. Oh shit. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, see, nothing nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh oh. Not good. Not good. So funny thing, I didn't quick save. Um, so that's kind of an issue. Not, uh, I mean, one of the Kerbals survived. Really? One, one of them survived. Um, but that was definitely not part of the plan. There's the seat there. Well, definitely lost a Kerbal. <laughs> uh, did both Kerbal? Did? Yeah, one of them survived. I just don't know where he is. He's around here somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't think I, I have a save. Okay, I, I did have a save. <laughs> I am super glad I had a save, because uh, that would have been bad. That was that was a lot. <laughs> I think it was like an, a couple hours worth. Um, I know I cut away a lot, but I didn't want to have to do all that over again. Um, so yeah, we're, we're back. We're, we're alive. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch our fuel and uh, try one more time to return to base without dying. <laughs> We'll do this a little more conservatively. You just kind of go in an arc.
Okay, now I know which one's my front engines. That's gonna be useful. Uh oh. Okay. See if we can land on that thing. I tend to get really quiet when I'm trying to dock with something, um, so I should probably like dub over this <laughs> in post production somehow. Um, sorry. If this isn't the most exciting thing in the world. I don't know why I record these. Um, it's not really part of the tutorial, but it is part of the process. And I like to show, you know, my struggles. Like, I'm trying here. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Ah yes, super safe landing. Look at that, look at that. Oh yeah, how do you like that? <laughs> Um, magnets help. Uh, the, the, the docking magnets on these orbital assembly docking ports, it's very good. A um, little wobbly there, this vessel's probably a little too heavy to be docking right there, <laughs> but that's where we docked it. Okay, so now, now we are, we are ready. We can go ahead and quick save. Good. Shut down the engines. <laughs> Always good. Uh, let's go ahead and deactivate the, let's see, I believe, oh yeah, that's right, um, that activates weapons, I don't want to do that, so I want to individually disable these, because uh, the hotkeys are going to conflict. Definitely always want to make sure you know which hotkeys do which, um, and now we can edit them in flight, which is, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for that. <laughs> Um, all right, so all right, this is that, and then let's just go in here and switch view to the. Oops, passed right by it. This one, and I can just use this button right here. Boom! That shuts the engines down for me. Perfect. Okay, now let's uh, let's get to work. So we've got our survey site. We use our Survey um, Planetary Coppola has a Survey EL uh, Electro Extraplanetary Launch Pad Survey Site module attached to it. So you use this when you don't want to build something directly attached to a pad. Uh, so you show the UI. It says Aldney Kerman Base. Uh, you can, you know, change that to Survey Site Alpha if you want. Uh, but we're going to use Aldney Kerman Base. Okay. Uh, we can rename the site. We can also use just like a completely different pad. Um, so you have a lot of options. You can pick you know, a mission flag before it loads. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and go with... I don't 
really, I, I know a lot of these flags come from mods that I use and I'd like to use them. I just don't know which ones are which or whose are whose. Um, so somebody out there, give me a shout out of a mission flag that I should use. Cause I pretty much always either use the NASA one or the Kerbin one. Um, but I'd, I'd like to mix it up. So give me a shout out which mission flag um, I should use in the future. But today we are gonna go with that one cause it looks cool. Yeah, why not? All right, so we're gonna select our craft and here's where the fun starts. We want the base that I built, and it's, I have so many. Uh, if I knew my alphabets. Oh, all right, I'm looking in the wrong one. I need to look in the space plane here, not the, not the VAD. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's try this again. Ah, the outpost of Lang. Um, dry without any resources, only cost 957,829 credits. It is 200 parts in one stage. And as far as extra planetary launch pads is concerned, um, it's going to take a minute to build. It's going to take a minute to load. <laughs> So this is this is running in real time just like it's thinking it's calculating it's like okay how am i gonna how am i gonna do this do, 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 do. well while we're waiting for this load to see this thing right here power suit uh mark two or something power suit two i'm subscribed to it on steam i forget who exactly uploaded this but i'll check um and try to throw a thing down in the comments at one point i want to make that thing um able to use interstellar fuels so that's that's the little project of mine um, that i've been working on i haven't been very successful in getting it to work um the original uh, if you find it on steam there is it works <laughs> um, but i wanted to use interstellar fuels instead of liquid fuel and oxygen or oxidizer anyway the outpost of ling needs 51,739.45 rocket parts i have currently 4,000. so this will take a while to build um and it's just gonna just have to it's gonna take probably like a month i don't know it's it's huge it's i mean 50 that, that's it's like two three hundred tons it's got everything it's got all the things to refine all the things so this is what we're going to be using for our in situ resource utilization um tutorial if you stuck around this long in the video don't worry that is what is going to be the next chapter is this thing's going to get built the first step of course was just um Surveying the site, making sure that the resources that we were going to utilize were proper, and now we build the thing. Radio then. So this would take nine days, fourteen hours, if I had all the parts available. Uh, but once all these parts are used up, uh, this rate will drop to basically it'll get built as fast as I can make rocket parts. Um, yeah. Uh, so once again, let me make sure that my drills are active. Uh, these things keep turning off um, between loading, um, but they will stay on if you switch vessels. But definitely, they keep turning off when I start when I when I load the, the scene again. But that's okay. All right, we don't need that scanner on. Make sure we're still making those. Make sure we're still smelting those. Still producing rocket parts. Excellent. Okay, uh, we need this guy. To get into the workshop um, so that he can contribute to this build. Alrighty, there he goes, flying off into space again. Alright, looks like he still has his drill, um, but that's okay, he can keep that on him. We'll be using it later. join production uh, which is going to speed things up a little bit so let's check the UI and yeah see his presence took five days off of that build five days and then some 
um, but they're still going to eventually get down to uh, the rate limiting step of how fast can they actually produce rocket parts. Um, I could speed this up by importing rocket parts, but this will happily do it on its own, so I don't need to. All right, so let's go ahead and check on our build site, make sure that we lined everything up properly. And as suspected, it came out exactly how I wanted. The center of mass is in line with the equator. Uh, it didn't go past this line, so our survey, our little science site is safe. And from the looks of how this is aligned, um, it is actually facing the direction that I want. So living quarters are going to be on this side, um, and production is going to be on this side. That's a com slash microwave tower. And then over here, you've got a docking port and then the radiators. And then in the middle is where all the fun stuff happens. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut away, and then we will be back when this thing is done building in probably several days. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump back. Oh, look at that, you can just barely make out the, the green outline of the pers of the uh, projected site of where that outpost will be built. So that's about two kilometers away, not quite, it's like 1.8 kilometers away. Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, it's gonna take, you know, like I said, a good while to build. Um, but in the meantime, while it's building, it is of course smelting metal and doing all that good stuff. So we're getting that liquid CO2 um, that we can then use to refuel this bad boy right here. And actually it looks like I need to allow more to collect. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we are still collecting, there. okay, good. We're still collecting carbon dioxide. Um, and I'll transfer that over uh, in increments uh, here and there, but we won't uh, bother with that too much. So in the meantime though, um, these kerbals don't have much to do. Um, they have a few, uh, you know, recreational supplies, just in case they get bored. Um, but other than that, they're just going to hang out and build. And build. And then build some more. Okay. Now, you can see, once we get down to zero rocket parts, um, the rate jumps up to 23 days. 9 hours, 56 minutes. Um, is the rate at which Kerbals with a productivity of 6.37 with this one workshop right here are able to produce rocket parts. Okay, If we pause the build, uh, you can see that's about how fast they make the rocket parts. Okay, <laughs> um, If I had more engineers and more workshops, um, then you know things would, uh, would work better. Um, in sandbox with fully leveled up engineers I think I can actually put a scientist or a pilot in here and they will contribute uh, to the productivity let me let me try that I'm gonna take Daisy here uh, she's a pilot I'm gonna put her in the third seat in the workshop and see if that changes oh that increases our productivity to 8.11. So yeah, um, in career mode, when you're starting out, you're not gonna have, um, you know, five-star kerbals. So your engineers aren't gonna be that good in the workshops, and uh, pilots and scientists trying to work in the workshop are actually going to hurt your productivity. Uh, it's gonna, you can go negative, you know, you can just be like awful productivity. Um, but once your engineers get like a certain level, um, they can start, um, imparting their knowledge and wisdom to other Kerbals, and then they will start um, either neutralizing that negative effect or start adding to your productivity once you get you know fully ranked up. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then resume building so that this can get done a little bit faster. Here we go. And yeah, it's still gonna take like 23 days. Uh, but we can, we can just plow through that. As you can see, um, there is no trouble this thing has absolutely no trouble in keeping up uh, as far as ore 
and fuel and that sort of things so electricity it just keeps going and going and going um, and going uh, eventually it will need to be resupplied with positrons and antimatter um, but by the time that happens that base will be built and would actually be able to just use electric charge to produce such things um, or beamed power and then you know it's gonna have a cyclotron on it um, so it'll be able to refill this bad boy all right what we got 19 days we can just go full tilt right 17 16 15 14 13 12 um, yeah Hopefully this doesn't explode when we come out of time warp, because that's happened to me before <laughs> um, in various situations. But we'll just we'll see how far we get. All right, closing in. Couple days left. Almost finished. in there and it should be done and no explosions right all right let's save our game <laughs> do a quick save all right make sure we still have the pilot in here range two kilometers build sites over there it is of course nighttime so let's go ahead and get to daytime what's well, one more day we've been waiting a month Okay, it is daytime. We can see the build site in the distance. Oh, the anticipation is killing me. Okay, here we go. Now, just picture, like, in reality, what was going on is this little vessel right here was taking parts that were built and flying them out, coming back, refueling, taking parts that were built, flying back, refueling, and so forth, and, you know, for like a month. <laughs> All right, and then we finalize the build. Aren't you glad I'm not monetized? Because this is where someone would normally put a commercial. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Nope. All we are waiting for is the game engine to process my madness into a thing. So hopefully, hopefully it works. <laughs> Just kind of, kind of wait. Is it going to be a thing or is it going to be an explosion? Who knows. Well, it didn't explode. We did, however, run out of ultra-dense deuterium fusion fuel. How do you like that? It didn't explode. It's huge. It's flat. It's got a crane. It's got a launch site. It's got hydroponics. It's got towers and domes and all sorts of neat stuff. And right off the bat, activate the receiver. Check for power, we haven't any. Activate the receiver, check for power, we haven't any. Activate receiver, check for power. Really? Nothing's in range right now? Nothing's in range right now. Oh well. Um, that's okay. Um, actually, what I think I need to do is go ahead and just reload because there's got to be something in range. Nope, there's definitely nothing in range. Okay, we're on the wrong side of the planet. I don't have enough relays up. But that's okay. Totally okay. Um, the facility itself is working. Now, I, I want to I wanna point something out. This facility is... 200 parts, okay? Um, and then over there, in the same loading scene, 1.8 kilometers away, is a vessel that's another close to 200 parts. So you got probably 400-ish parts on the scene right now. And um, it's, it, it's going pretty good. Like, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't look too bad. All right, so let's um, see. I don't have any electric charge, so I can't actually get this thing to do anything uh, until the shipyard comes around, so I'm just going to fast forward. 
And of course it's nighttime when the shipyard comes back around, but oh, look at that. Oh, wait, let me get that off the screen. Um, yes, we now have power, lots and lots of it. Um, and a little too much. I'm gonna need to turn the reception down. Uh, let's just, oh, why did I have a transmitter on? No wonder it wasn't working. I hit transmitter? What is wrong with me? Okay, yeah, see that's why it was boiling hot is because the transmitter was on, not the receiver. Is this a transmitter or a receiver? Okay, good. And we are getting lots of power from our relays. Good stuff. We won't look at that too much. I wanted to get that shot right there of this thing in the dark and then brightening up. Um, definitely going to have to EVA and put some actual lights on things that are important to look at because it does look like I neglected to put appropriate lights on the outside so that people can see what's going on. But this is what it looks like at night um, without all that. And I gotta say, I really love these domes, so they had to go on there. Um, it won't be nearly this glowy with the radiators, uh, it's just that it was super hot um, for whatever reason, uh, because I had the transmitter on, but that'll, that'll get fixed um, as soon as I reload the scene. And yeah. All right, so now that it's on and it's got a decent amount of electric charge, I can go ahead and fast forward to the daytime. Oops, too fast. Fast forward to the daytime. Get the shadow under it so we can see it appropriately. Wonderful. Wunderbar. Okay. Turn that off since we're not going to be using any of that for the moment. And just kind of get a look around at what we're going to be dealing with. Okay. First things first. Let's go ahead and clamp that in place. These are the Flexo Clampotron docking ports uh, from Flexible Docking. As you can see, it will dock to a docking port right there on the vessel and it'll seek it out and find it. And I thought that this was kind of a neat way uh, to connect you know, multiple portions of the station without weird struts and stuff going around. You just use a docking port. And then so, you know, it's going to drill and extract stuff and send stuff that way down to the smelter and the refineries and the nuclear storage and whatnot. It's also going to send stuff this way, and it's going to be carefully um, analyzed and monitored using the science juniors acting as spectrometers to make sure that only certain liquids and gases are passed this way into these tanks, um, which store uh, things like hydrogen peroxide, water, liquid water, nitrogen, oxygen, and liquid methane, as well as more liquid oxygen, and a refrigerator unit on top that would happily accept some liquid fluorine if there were any to be had. Over here we have mineral storage, so spotamine, oh yeah, there's also regolith storage down here. So spotamine, regolith, and then we've got, of course, uh, good old nitrotine, and we have aluminium, and we have lithium, and we have carbon, and we have boron. Remember I mentioned you can sequester carbon from the refining process? Well, I'm going to do that here because I have a cyclotron here and I can use carbon as a uh, fusion input. See cyclotron particle accelerator? Lots of options on making new things and carbon is definitely an input, so I'm saving my carbon. Uh-huh. Uh, radioactive storage for all manner of things. You know, you got your thorium, your thorium, your actinides, all that good stuff. Okay, so very important note. Um, while this thing could potentially produce resources on its own, um, I could simply turn it on right now and it would start chugging away. Okay, um, in fact, I will get it prepared to do just that. Go ahead and deploy my drills. And, you know, if I wanted to, it can go ahead and just start uh, producing fuels. Um, not going to do that quite yet because I want to have my engineers on board um, because the engineers are the ones that are actually going to refine the process. They will make your drills work better. They will make your smelter work better. They'll make your refinery work better. They'll make all your parts work better um, in this process. Uh, so to waste not, want not, you know, I'm just going to wait on that. Um, what I am going to do, however, is go ahead and 
um, fix the crane in place uh, so that uh, it doesn't wobble around when I'm not using it. And this is why you want the Breaking Ground DLC because you get robots, robotic parts, but also a robotic controller that you can program. Um, you want that. You, know, you trust. You just you want that. Um, however, I think. Oh yeah, I bet you a dollar this is locked. Yep, it's locked. Disengage and unlock. There we go. Now I can run this back. There we go. A uh, little ballast tank on the end here. Um, currently empty, but if I were to put ore in there, I could use this, you know, to kind of balance the thing um, as if it were a crane. And then to lock it in place, another of these flexible clampotrons with, you know, super duper magnet abilities. Uh, it's going to go ahead and deploy out and seek out its spot and docks. Okay, cool. So that's locked in place. Um, it won't, uh, won't move. So I can pull that back in and then that's how that works and then you know when I want to use it I can have it come over here pick something up and either and, and basically drop it anywhere around here or I can pick something up around here and then drop it on here that sort of thing so it's pretty simple crane but it's useful to have a crane I feel um, we're gonna go with I went with the tri alpha colliding beam fusion reactor um, mainly because I wanted to use a uranium reactor on here and go through the whole uranium nitride process but there's no freaking fluorine so I'm gonna have to do um, something else. For, I'm, I'm going to do that on the uh, the launch pad at KSC, but there's no uranium on the launch pad at KSC. So, yeah, you feel where I'm going with this? It's, it's kind of like I need a whole nother planet to properly give you that tutorial. Um, but we're going to do what we can here. Oh, nothing to see here. Just filling up eight different fuel tanks from my refrigerator. It's going to take a little while to condense all that carbon dioxide into liquid. You know, I always thought... Um, the carbon dioxide didn't actually liquefy. It was uh, more of a, it turned into dry ice and then would sublimate. So it would go from like the solid to the gaseous phase and from the gaseous phase to the solid phase. But uh, I guess you can't actually liquefy it. You just gotta be really good at it. Um, but yeah, thing, the things the things you learn. Uh, so yeah, just um, gonna go ahead and fill this bad boy up and then we're gonna fly it on over uh, with the pilot and engineer as the starting crew, then we'll get some more engineers and scientists over there to run the greenhouses and all sorts of things. But uh, two-person crew is gonna consist of uh, the pilot and engineer that uh, did this stuff, uh, Hergen and Aldney. And uh, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and head on over and dock with the new station, or with the new um, outpost. Okay, we have separation and activate the receivers. They are active. Activate engines. They are active. Switch back to CO2. Check. And we are off. Oh, something's wrong. Are we out of. Uh, it appears that we do not have enough power to take off. That's too bad. Where's that satellite at? Oh, we just need to wait for it to come back around. Definitely don't want to run out of beamed power while you're in the middle of flight, but if you're landed, that's not such a bad thing to happen. There we go, now we have power. I know, I know build more relays. That's that's why I'm building the things, so that I can get the resources to build the, the things, you know? <laughs> um, baby steps. One, one, one baby step at a time. Alright, let's go ahead and get on course.
All right, we approach for our landing. Oops, a little too much. <laughs> Switch to surface mode on this one. And, and there you have it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, um, that, that, that's how you, that's how you dock. It's just how it's done. That's how you do it. Right? Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look, see at what we have here. Greenhouse is down here. Gas storage right here. Got all the gases, all the gases. See ore storage, got some noble gas storage, got a refinery, got some hydrogen, got some nuclear storage, more noble gas storage over here. Scrap metal, ah, there's the recycler. That's where we put all the junks. Um, and then we, you know, we have got fuel and you got metal, things like that. And then we got your drills. You got a little platform you can walk on with ladders. 
Look at that. It's got a ladder. Who doesn't like a good ladder? Right? Not that we actually use these, but it's the thought that counts. Right, so the engineer actually is going to take up residence in this here workshop right there. Ta da! Okay. Oh, wait, that wasn't the engineer. That was the pilot. <laughs> the pilot's not going to go there. Um, pilot's actually going to go in here. Let's, uh, let's crawl up here. Use the ladder. What are you doing? Use the ladder. Oh my goodness. Can't even use a ladder. Wants to climb it like a monkey. Alright, space monkey. I guess... Kerbals would be more ape-like than monkey-like. Space ape. Apes in space. Okay. <laughs> that was way more complicated than it needed to be. Alright, so you're there, and then we're going to put you in the workshop with your patented dismount that you enjoy so well. Terrible waste of fuel or anything. Eh. At least we get a good view of what's going on here. Science labor laboratory. Wonderful. And turn the engines off there. Now we have a vessel productivity of 3.6. Awesome. Okay. Now we can activate the drills. I feel like I have a button attached to that. No, 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 no. Oh, they all got overridden. Okay. That's okay. I can just turn them on by hand. So third. Um, I still have a satellite overhead, right? Yeah, I have plenty of power. Okay. Start. are on. Turn on the refinery and just go ahead and start making liquid fuel and oxidizer. Uh, so it will slowly spool up in efficiency, thermal efficiency, core temperature, etc, etc. It's going to use stock radiation if you have interstellar extended installed. Um, interstellar is going to make sure that your radiators work as interstellar radiators and stock radiators. So Work seamlessly, nothing to even do or worry about. Just make sure you have the radiators and you're good. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, at the rate we're extracting ore at this location, we're pretty much on a 2% load uh, for making these with the efficiencies granted by one engineer. So it's not the most ore that we're, we're digging up. Um, actually, it does not appear as though that thing was even running. I don't know what that was all about. Did I not turn them on? Huh. Alright, I don't know what happened there for a second. They must have turned off. Let's see what happens now. Ah, we've gotten to 4%. Oh, no, it's climbing. Steeply. 
Okay, so it just needed a warm up or something, or just needed more ore available. I don't know what was going on there. I got a null reference exception on the screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and try something out real quick. Just reload. Okay, so something super weird just happened. I loaded the game, you know, just did a quick load, and immediately explosion, so I thought, oh no, the base is doomed. And the weirdest thing happened. Basically, a copy of this craft right here exploded all over. See, there's the, the midsection. That's this part right here, holding this. Like, that's that. But, like, this is undamaged and untouched. No Kerbals died. Um, it was just like that thing blew up, but it was like a rogue element. Um, but as you can see, impact recorded. Science report can now be collected. Uh, this thing right here is collecting science from those explosions, um, which I can then gather and, you know, research or whatever. But um, So that's how that works. You know, when something blows up, it hits the ground. But I have no idea where that craft came from. See that? craft that that right there is a duplicate of this one from an alternate universe um, so already the outpost of Lang is producing supernatural activity um, not sure what to make of that but science yeah all right okay you're probably wondering why Illumina is on the screen and I don't blame you I've had it on there because I've intended to actually do something about it see there's the rest of the craft over there I don't know where it came from, guys. Um, no idea where that thing came from. Can I can I aim the camera at it? Is there anyone aboard it? Are there duplicate Kerbals on it? Um, I wanted to talk about Illumina, but this this happened. It doesn't look like yeah, I don't see anyone in that seat, so I don't think there's anyone in here. Um, but yeah, that's just super weird. Super weird. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to do about that. Um, let's, uh, go back over to our ship here. So there's no Illumina on this particular site for me to harvest, so I can't really do that, and I have to kind of skip, skip the Illumina, uh, tutorial. And I do have half a mind to try to shoot that down. Uh, there's more science, more science to record, um, but I, I don't really want to mess around with that. Honestly, I just want to make sure that this thing was fine, and it is, and confirm that there's no one on board this vessel, and there is not. Okay, so that's cool. And now it has to crash. And this could take a while. Throwing all kinds of exceptions. Okay, really quick before we get to the, the, the full tutorial I know I've been promising, I just wanted to kind of show you real quick a um, little scan across the horizon there. Uh, the distance at which we're at, you know, there's all that debris and wreckage there. Um, in order to see the outpost, I have to go to nine times magnification, which puts that sucker I can lock target uh, 1,803.9 kilometers away, um, roughly, you know, 1,800 kilometers away, depending on the angle that I'm actually pointing at it. Um, and you can see I can't see the whole thing. Like, it's hidden by the curvature of Minmus itself. Um, you know, it's, it's beyond the horizon. So all those other little doodads up there are also hidden um, by the horizon. Let's see if I can un I said unlock. Well, it doesn't want to unlock. Can I reset? There we go. Uh, so I can't actually see any of those things that blew up there past the horizon. If I shine the laser over there, nothing shows up. because uh, it's all past the horizon. Um, so it's also why the radar can't actually detect any of that. So about two kilometers out, and you have radar defilade, radar and laser defilade on Minmus um, from this height. <laughs> now if I were to rise up in the air, of course I could 
um, definitely pick up on it. But yeah. Anyway, so that's that's that. Yes, I, I moved the thing so that it could point and try to see if I could actually see it. Um, but uh, yeah. So yeah, there's there's the debris of the thing that decided to blow up. Uh, we'll turn all that into scrap metal. There's our survey site. Uh, there's some more explosions. This thing is just chalking, just racking up the science as all these things explode. <laughs> Um, and I'm getting a lot of reference exceptions to that. So I'm not sure how stable this base is going to be in the future um, once I reload. And yeah, so this, I don't know how this is going to go, but we're going to try it anyway. So Illumina, normally you would get yourself a big tank and you would mine up Illumina. Look over here and it would say some percent above zero and you would, of course, mine it. So we don't have any, so I, I can't do that tutorial today. Sorry, um, but what we do have uh, all kinds of other stuff. We have, for instance, uraninite. Uh, so we are storing the uraninite in one of these, depleted uranium uraninite. Uh, so far we've got 260 grams. Uh, the drill turned off though, so let's go ahead and turn that back on and look again. All right, so we're mining uraninite at says storage is missing. It's certainly not missing. Um, so I'm, I'm having a few glitches here, um, what with being a little too ambitious with what I'm doing and all the weird things going on. So I might have to redo this one. So this will be uh, part one, setting the stage for in situ resource utilization. And part two will be uh, recorded uh, next and um, after I make sure that this is all stable and working properly. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the second part. Yeah, I think what I'll do is just remove this big ship from the scene completely. Just put it back in orbit. Um, its job is done here. It has eaten enough of Minmus to produce a copy of itself that is land-based that will eat the rest of Minmus over time. Uh, so this can move on to an actual planet instead of a moon, as it was pointed out that Minmus is not a planet, so it's not really eating a planet. Um, you know, started out as a snack. This is, you know, the snack to test it out, and then it's going to move on to an actual planet and uh, devour that. <laughs> All right, but yeah, we'll just go ahead and uh, put this back in orbit, and then get started on the actual resource tutorial in the next video. Thanks for watching, and uh, the next one will be up soon. Yeah, I wanted to mention, by the way, um, that I didn't point out, if you put a thermal reactor on the end of your Discovery Magnetic Confinement Fusion Rocket, um, it will sustain itself and you won't have to provide outside power um, to keep it going. You just need to jumpstart it, uh, which you could do with capacitors, beamed power, or whatever. And then it will sustain itself if you actually attach a generator to it. Um, I neglected to do that in this build. Uh, which is why it uses so much power to get it going. Uh, well, not it doesn't use so much power to get it going, but um, it uh, doesn't sustain itself on this particular vessel where it actually could, and I could save myself a lot of delta V. Anyway, yeah. Go ahead and put ourselves back into an orbit.
is very nice to be able to time accelerate while firing the engines. We're a lot more massive than we were before, so it's going to take a lot more fuel to get into orbit, even around min, because we're carrying so much uh, extra stuff. And that's good enough. And there we have it. The uh, good old ship is ready to go for its next mission. Minus a couple crew members. <laughs>